Matilda by Roald Dahl. This is one of my favourite books and I remember reading it when I was in school. It tells the story of a young girl called Matilda who has quite a difficult life. However, one day she discovers she has certain psychic powers that just might make all the difference. The book has been made into a musical written by Tim Minchin and as the song says, sometimes you just have to be a little bit naughty. Mr Wormwood kept his hair looking bright and strong, or so he thought, by rubbing into it every morning large quantities of a lotion called Oil of Violet Hair Tonic. A bottle of this smelly purple mixture always stood on the shelf above the sink in the bathroom, alongside all of the toothbrushes, and a very vigorous scalp massage with Oil of Violets took place daily after shaving was completed. This hair and scalp massage was always accompanied by loud masculine grunts and heavy breathing and gasps of, Ah, oh, that's better. That's the stuff. Rub it right into the roots. Which could be clearly heard by Matilda in her bedroom across the corridor. Now, in the early morning privacy of the bathroom, Matilda unscrewed the cap of her father's oil of violets and tipped three quarters of the contents down in the drain. Then she filled the bottle up with her mother's platinum blonde hair dye extra strong. She carefully left enough of her father's original hair tonic in the bottle so that when she gave it a good shake, the whole thing still looked reasonably purple. She replaced the bottle on the shelf above the sink, taking care to put her mother's bottle back in the cupboard. So far, so good. At breakfast time, Matilda sat quietly at the dining room table eating her cornflakes. Her brother sat opposite her with his back to the door, devouring hunks of bread smothered with a mixture of peanut butter and strawberry jam. The mother was just out of sight around the corner in the kitchen, making Mr Wormwood's breakfast, which always had to be two fried eggs on fried bread with three pork sausages and three strips of bacon and some fried tomatoes. At this point, Mr Wormwood came noisily into the room, he was incapable of entering any room quietly, especially at breakfast time. He always had to make his appearance felt immediately by creating a lot of noise and clatter. One could almost hear him saying, it's me, here I come, the great man himself, the master of the house, the wage earner, the one who makes it possible for all the rest of you to live so well. Notice me and pay your respects. On this occasion, he strode in and slapped his son on the back and shouted, well, my boy, your father feels he's in for another great money-making day today at the garage. I've got a few little beauties I'm going to flog to the idiots this morning. Where's my breakfast? It's coming, treasure, Mrs Wormwood called from the kitchen. Matilda kept her face bent low over her cornflakes. She didn't dare look up. In the first place, she wasn't at all sure what she was going to see. And secondly, if she did see what she thought she was going to see she wouldn't trust herself to keep a straight face. The sun was looking directly ahead out of the window, stuffing himself with bread and peanut butter and strawberry jam. The father was just moving round to sit at the head of the table when the mother came sweeping out from the kitchen, carrying a huge plate piled high with eggs and sausages and bacon and tomatoes. She looked up. She caught sight of her husband. She stopped dead. Then she let out a scream that seemed to lift her right up into the air and she dropped the plate with a crash and a splash onto the floor. Everyone jumped, including Mr Wormwood. What the heck's the matter with you, woman? He shouted. Look at the mess you've made on the carpet. Your hair! The mother was shrieking, pointing a quivering finger at her husband. Look at your hair! What have you done to your hair? What's wrong with my hair, for heaven's sake, he said. Oh my God, Dad, what have you done to your hair? The son shouted. A splendid, noisy scene was building up nicely in the breakfast room. Matilda said nothing. She simply sat there admiring the wonderful effect of her own handiwork. Mr Wormwood's fine crop of black hair was now a dirty silver. The colour this time of a tightrope walker's tights that had not been washed for the entire circus season.